Okay, following on from my video just now um, about my um, comedy script read-throughs for a laugh group that I'm hoping to start in Whistable. Um, I said I was going to read a short story of mine um, that's, I think, maybe funny. I don't know, maybe it's not. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go just to get the ball rolling. Um, this is called Barbie, Me and Dr. Z. Um, it's going to take about 10 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. Um, the builders are grinding stone down the road somewhere, so this could go wrong, but and I'll do my best reading. So, Okay, Barbie Z, Barbie me and Dr. Z. Barbie brushes blonde hair from her face and says, we need to talk. We're at the back of Debenhams in a gloomy storage area that's become our changing room for the few hours we're here. The star, of course, the guy who's playing Action Man, doesn't come here to change. No, no. They have him change at the hotel, and then they chauffeur him here in a stretch limo. A stretch limo. Unreal. My moustache has lost its stickiness and is curling up away from my lip. I've taken off my silver Dr. Z boots and I'm holding a just-removed sock in my hand. What about, I say? This, she says, gesturing to the room. She looks in my general direction, but can't seem to make eye contact with me. She's wearing the brilliant blue Barbie dress with the sequins and shiny bits and a sparkly tiara. Okay, I say. I try to flatten down my moustache with the sock in my hand. This, she says again. Storerooms, shelving units. She kicks at a game on the floor. Hungry fucking hippos. It's all so empty. Bear with me one sec. Oh, I've gone way ahead, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I skipped. Hungry fucking hippos, it's all so empty. I'm confused, floundering. So you're calling halt, I say. She frowns and tilts her head to the side. Calling halt, she says. And then Jerry from the toy department pops his head in the door. Where's Barbie, he says. I've got a load of little girls waiting to see her. After, with the store closing, Barbie slips away and I know what she's doing. So I stay on talking to the few remaining kids, signing autographs as Dr. Z. Kellyanne is hovering behind me. She works for the company and it's her job to make sure we don't do anything or say anything inappropriate. On my first store appearance, I got excited and went off script, describing to the kids a particularly brutal encounter with Action Man. I looked up to see Kellyanne's frowning face as she made that cock gesture across her neck. Dr. Z, Dr. Z never shoots, stabs or kills anyone, she said after. But the kid asked me if I gave Action Man his scar, I said. The kid was six years old, said Kellyanne. We need to avoid aggression conflict. But they're arch enemies. Yes, said Kellyanne, but not in a violent sense. Now, with Barbie clearly gone, I don't even bother getting changed. I take off the blue Fu Manchu wig, but the purple suit, the makeup and the moustache, I leave on. I sit there staring at an old broken etch-a-sketch on the floor and then action man comes in dr z he says in his big voice he doesn't know my name he calls me dr z americanizing the z to z even though he's british hey that was great today he says great improv with the floor manager i smile and nod my head you're all right he says he's still in costume not really i've just been dumped no! Yeah, I say. Barbie. And I point to the door as if she's standing right there. No way, says Action Man. Barbie, no way. That really, that really shits. I look at him. He's taking drugs and he's getting his words muddled up. He'd said, that really shits in this really very intense and scary way without knowing it. Look, man, he says. Come back to the hotel with us. We're having a few drinks. Me, my girl, Kellyanne and the others. I sigh and press my, press my moustache down, but it curls up again after a few seconds. 
Dr. Z, come on, man, it's the least we can do. A look at his action man scar. It's pristine. So pristine, you'd never know it wasn't a real scar. <laughs> the makeup artists always do a good job with the principles. Okay, I say. We go back to the hotel in the stretch limo. I'm still wearing my costume, sitting opposite Action Man and his girlfriend, the lead singer from Buzz, stylized B U Z Z. Kellyanne is there and a couple of others from the crew. Part of me is very aware of being in a stretch limo with genuine celebs, but beneath all that, I'm thinking about Barbie and how we met in store and how one day a few weeks later, we had sex in our costumes in a storeroom that backed onto the staff canteen. It became our thing whenever we worked together. I mean, we didn't arrange it or discuss it, it just happened. But always in full costume and always in a dingy storeroom where you'd be trying to get some purchase against the back shelf or put your hand down on a past the pile of last year's buckaroos or kaplunks. We made a sign, changing room please knock just in that case anyone came in I mean no one ever came in no one bothered you tucked away in a, some forgotten storeroom but one time Barbie was bent over a stack of faulty operations and the buzzers kept going off we couldn't hear a thing so we made the sign Barbie and Dr Z sometimes Barbie and me as action man if it was a low-key event and they couldn't afford a star Anyway, that was us. It might sound weird, but it happened and we went with it. The part of me trying to be cool is working very hard trying to be cool. The right side of my moustache is really starting to curl up now and each time I smooth it down, it sticks for a couple of seconds and then pops up again. We settle in and Action Man says, Dr. Z's just split up with Barbie. There's an underwhelming round of commiserations and Action Man and Buzz Girl start speaking very quickly to each other. Then Buzz Girl says, Wow, that's crazy sad about you and Barbie. What happened? I look at her for a moment. She went off with Ken, I say. Buzz Girl tilts her head as if some infinitesimal part of the world does not quite compute. God, that's awful, she says. Poor you. Sorry, man, Action Man says, leaning forward and patting me hard on the knee. I look at them for a ridiculous number of seconds and they stare back at me with well-intentioned faces and hugely dilated pupils. I want to tell them I'm joking, but I'm hypnotized by their celebrity. So you do this full time, Action Man says, breaking the spell. You an actor? <laughs> actor? Me? I say. No, I'm studying English at the uni. Uni? Says Action Man frowning. Bit old for that, aren't you? I laugh, even though it wasn't a joke. English, says Action Man, seriously. I've always wanted to know what you do when you study English. After a second, I realise that he actually wants me to tell him. Well, you know, I say, we look at texts, literary texts. Text, says Action Man, like on your phone. No, texts like novels, stories, plays, you know. Books, you mean. Yeah, books. Like I'm reading the Da Vinci Code, says Action Man. I restick my moustache. Well, yeah, I say, but it's not really literature. Not really literature, Action Man repeats. He's frowning again. Why? Well, because it's, it's not literary. It's not, you know, uh, dealing with the human condition. Action Man shakes his head. But the Da Vinci Code, he says, if it's true, it means that Jesus' relatives are still alive. That's pretty fucking human condition to me. I stare at him open mouth and then nod and say, yeah, that's true. Anyway, we read texts closely and we try to work out what they mean. Every time you say text, says Bosco, I still think you mean on your phone. Action Man looks confused. Don't you know what they mean then? Well, yes, in a sense. But that doesn't, you know, fix the meaning forever. S 
silence in the car. Like, you know, the meaning of the work is always plural. Uh, it doesn't reside in the text, but in the relationship between the reader and text. I mean, it is in the text, but it's about what the reader brings to it, you know, from a post-structuralist perspective at least. I'm looking from one face to another and each of them is looking intently back at me. It's all about where the meaning resides, I say. Action Man looks at me and then sits forward and very seriously says, to be or not to be, that is the question. Silence in the car again and then everyone cracks up laughing. Fifty shades is enough for me, says Buzzgirl. Amen to that, says Action Man. But Dr. Z's right. If the Da Vinci Code is true, that means something very different from if it's not true. He looks at me. Doesn't it? Absolutely, I say. We're here, says Kellyanne. Out we spill from the stretch limo and into the hotel, upon which Action Man, Buzzgirl and Kellyanne disappear, leaving me with the two choir guys from the crew. We get drinks, sit down, and the skinny one says, what you said in the car, he gives a little nose laugh, <laughs> that was bollocks, wasn't it? I take a long sip of my beer. See, we don't really think you know what you're talking about, says the other one. I laugh. It's all I can do, because I know what else to say. What is post-structuralist then, says the skinny one. Can you explain it to us? Well, I take a slug of beer. Post-structuralism is, well, it's not really a theory, it's action man comes in looking flushed. What's all this then? He says, clapping his hands. Dr. Z's explaining what post-structuralism is. What is it? Action man says, looking at me. It's not really a theory, says the one skinny one smirking. They all look at me. It's, well, it's, it's difficult to um, exactly pin it down because, because you have to understand the binary nature of language. What the fuck's the binary nature of language? Actual man says. You know, um, good and bad, uh, right and wrong. Light and dark, up and down, um, man and woman. Eggs and bacon, says the skinny one. AC, DC, says Action Man. Two some, three some, gang bang. The three of them are laughing. Language, I say. Language is a structure, uh, uh, a structure of di differential. No, no. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a differential system of signs. What's the difference between Jordan and a piano, says Action Man. When the others join us, shower and changed out of their work clothes, it's then I realise I'm the only one still in costume. It's also then I realise that I've forgotten about Barbie. I excuse myself from the group, much to the disappointment of Action Man and much to the delight of the two crew guys. Then I'm out on the street. It's early evening, dark and cold, and I have no idea where I am. A group of blokes on their way out walk past me. Look at this twat, one of them says. I fucking hate goths, says the other one. Sorry. <laughs> I move on, keeping my head down. Although it takes 20 minutes, I find my way back to my car. Tucked in a corner of a small car park, I sit thinking about everything, watching people going about then out for the night. I don't even bother trying to stick down my moustache. Then on a whim, I decide to head to my brother's. Another hard day at the office, he says. I'm Dr. Z, standing on his doorstep. My moustache won't stay on my top lip. I think, I think she's ended it, I say. One of your birds has killed herself, he says, beaming. That's not funny. Who is it this time? I press my, down my moustache and it pops straight back up. Barbie. My brother laughs and in a voice sings, Come on, Barbie, let's go party. Later, we're in his kitchen drinking beers. I told you, he says. Told me what? Told you this would happen. My brother Frank is a golf pro at the local club. He dresses in sharp golf pro clothes, even when he's not playing golf, which is quite often because he hates it. 
Frank started playing golf when he was five and now he talks in crisp two iron sentences and tries to sick eight foot putts to end conversations. He needs go golf and hates golf like good does bad. You didn't tell me anything, I say. I told you, that mess you got into at the O2. That was Lara Croft. Frank looks at me, fuck, he says. All your girls meld, meld into one over time. On Thursday, I'm a scuba diver at a computer conference. I have these little speakers on my utility belt, which are supposed to be throwing out the sounds of the deep blue sea, but what it really sounds like is I walk through the crowds is that I have an upset stomach. Before the afternoon appearance, I write her a text, which I hesitate sending and then delete. Then I write her a much longer text, and before I have time to hesitate, I press send. She texts back immediately, please, this is not about you. Kinda is, I reply, adding a smiley face. You don't understand. I do. It's okay. We had have something good. Smiley face. There's a pause before our next text then. Just please stop. Can't. Smiley face. I know what we mean to each other. You're not listening. Is it about the costumes? Costumes? For fuck's sake. You want to move on from all that? Are you serious? Absolutely. Smiley face. There's another pause. Then her text. Please don't. I'm always right here. Heart. I go to my mother's. Max, her boyfriend, is reading the paper in the big chair. Mother brings in coffee and carrot cake. She says, your problem is you fall in love. She points at me with the carrot cake knife. Nowadays, you can't afford to. Everyone's a head turner today, and everyone's heads for turning. There's been no head turning, I say. This life's the exorcist, says Max from behind the paper. You can laugh, Mother says, but there's always a head turner. It's the catalyst. Mother cuts another slice of carrot cake and slides it onto my plate. You put them on pedestals. You always have. You put them on pedestals, and then their heads get turned. I'm looking out into the garden. It's not like that, I say. I thought she was the one, but she's changed. His relationships are summed up by one word, Max says. Pedestalization. You can laugh, Mother says. Two weeks later, I get a call for a store performance at the very shop where Barbie and I first had sex. And though I don't know she's going to be there, I know she's going to be there. The store manager confirms this but tells me Barbie's doing meet and greets by the front door in the morning. He makes no mention of Action Man. She'll be in toys this afternoon, he says. My morning performance goes well, and inside I've adopted this cool attitude of not caring whether I see Barbie again or not. Knowing, of course, I almost certainly will. But the mind is a mysterious thing, and suddenly an image of her in full costume changes everything. I have to speak to her. I have to be sure. And it all makes sense. Dr. Z and Barbie together again in that storeroom. Somehow it's meant to be. Taking the utility staircase, my heart is pounding as I walk through the staff only doors and make my way to the back storeroom. But on the door is the sign. Changing room, please knock. There's a hot, cold shock down my spine, but I'm drawn ineluctably forward and gently put my ear to the door grunts and sex moans from inside. I open the door and then she is with the blonde wig coming down her back and the blue Barbie dress hitched up around her hips. She has one leg on an old plastic chair, the kind they have in a junior school. Behind her in full costume, his hairy ass pumping, is Action Man. 
In the same instant, she sees me and screams. My mind races, but now Action Man is screaming too. And I realise that it's not the muscle-bound real Action Man, but just another promos bod called Andy Harper. Then he comes at me. I'm suddenly furious and I rush towards him, but someone's left an old twister mat on the floor. And as I plant my foot, it slides underneath me. The twister mat rocks up and catches on my other foot and I go into a pile of mouse traps. Games, not real traps. Sprawls on the floor. I realise that Andy Harper isn't coming at me at all. He is going for the door. I get to my feet and now it's my turn to scream. And as I chase him through the storeroom, screaming for some reason, not his name, but Action Man! Action Man! He has a good lead going through kitchenware, but gets stuck behind two old ladies looking at kettles. And I gain on him cutting through toys. There's a group of kids waiting for an appearance, and they see me and start booing, thinking it's part of the show. Action man, I scream, and all the kids follow me. Through beds, I'm catching him, three, maybe four king-size doubles behind. But as we slide into lingerie, there are people everywhere. Action man is dodging people. I'm screaming at him, dodging people. People are terrified, trying to dodge us. I'm barely two racks of knickers behind him when he collides with a rail of corsets, knocking it over. At speed, I can't avoid it. I go down onto the courses. When I bounce up to continue the chase, I have a black suspender belt hooked to my arm. I don't even notice. Hampered by style customers, slowed by interminable escalators, we go to the ground floor, where by the main doors, there's a huge crowd of excited kids waiting for their meet and greets. They begin to cheer as Action Man races towards them. And Andy Harper, even though he's fleeing for his life, can't resist the adoration of the crowd. He raises his arms and joins in the yays, and it's all the chance I need, for here I come at a gallop, still screaming, action man, as I close the distance between us and deliver a stylistically horrible, but nevertheless effective rugby tackle on him as he goes through the main doors. It happens quickly then. We get up and I swing at him, miss completely, but manage to grab his tunic as I follow through. I fall and pull him down with me. The right side of my moustache has flapped up and despite the scramble of everything, I attempt to stick it back down. All the kids are watching, but it doesn't matter because I'm up before him and I have the advantage. But rather than press it home with a couple of well-delivered kicks, I try to hammer him with the bottom of my fists. I've never been in a fight in my life. Still, I have the upper hand until from nowhere Action Man uppercuts me on the chin. I stagger into him. We grapple and from the corner of my eye I'm aware that it isn't just the kids watching but parents, customers, store workers, security staff and there at the front with that look on her face, Kellyanne. Get him Action Man! shouts the kid. Kill him! screams another. All the kids start screaming their support. I'm losing badly, but strangely, I'm still concerned with my moustache. I kick out with my last bit of strength, and suddenly Action Man is rolling on the ground, holding his groin. Yes, I say, getting up. Fucking have it! Everyone is looking at me. Barbie is there in full costume. The store manager is there with that look of disbelief on his face. And at the front of a crowd, there's a little boy waving a Dr. Z action figure in his hand. He's cheering, and I point to him and nod. This one's for you. Yeah, I say, in a kind of rocky Balboa growl. A couple of our kids are cheering, most are booing, one or two of the small ones are crying. I turn to them all and bow and raise my hands in the air. Yes, I shout at the top of my voice and making eye contact with Kellyanne. Flex my biceps like Mr. Universe. A genuine superhero. Well, I managed to get through that pretty well. Not too many stumbles. Um, so that's my little story. Um, I hope you found it funny. Barbie, me, and Dr. Z. Um, I read that because I'm trying to start a little gr a group in Whitstable um, to basically just read for fun, just read comedy scripts um, for a laugh and um, just maybe start something. Um, I've got a short play that I have written that is going to be um, 
produced and performed uh, for the members only in June. It's called Little Stevie Knox. It's uh, poignant and funny, hopefully. And um, so that's going on. So yeah, we're trying to get some things going in Whitstable. And um, if you're around in the area, it would be awesome. Just contact me and we'll see what we can do. So um, thank you very much if you listened to the whole of this, whatever it was, 15 hours of video, but I, I appreciate it. Thanks very much, cheers.